Hey everyone, Ali Darwa is like a human pinata at the moment. You whack him over the head and he drops a treat for you and it's happening in every video at the moment. So let's dive in and take a look. I'm not gonna start this video with any greetings or anything like that. These evil, evil countries. I watched this video and it boiled my blood. Wallahi, wallahi, I felt like driving to France and going to that school and standing in front of that school and telling the sisters, don't take your hijabs off my dear sisters. Yeah, of course you did, because that's the way you are. You and your Salafi brothers love to form mobs outside of schools. We've seen that enough in England recently with the kid who dropped a Quran on the floor. We saw that also a couple of years ago with the school teacher that was driven out of not only the school, but the town and is still in hiding. Don't take it off. Don't let this evil, corrupt government who believes in freedom of speech, yes, or freedom of dressing how you want. Of course you can. I mean, if you are a woman, boy who wants to transition into a girl and wants to dress up in a miniskirt, you go ahead. If you want to... Let's just give you a bit of context to what he's actually going on about. Now, he's got his little video, which is supposedly showing schoolgirls going into um, a school in France and they're taking off their hijabs and also I think they're taking off their scarf as well in certain cases. Now, this has been part of French law for a while because France enforces a secularism where they don't allow this kind of overt religiosity in these public institutions. Now, you can argue whether that is right or wrong, but the point is that's been the law and it's been like that for some time. So I don't know why you're suddenly getting outraged by this. You know, cut your bodily parts, whatever it may be, because you feel like you are, you feel like you're uh, a woman or a man. You go ahead, take puberty blockers, harm your body. It's all. Again, what is this got to do with what you're wearing? He's now trying to conflate issues over trans people with wearing overt religious symbols in certain public institutions in France. Now, these two things have got nothing to do with each other, but it just shows how desperate certain of these Darwa clowns are now that they try to insert completely unrelated things in the so-called kind of culture wars into anything to do with Islam. They're so desperate, they try and conflate these issues. They've got nothing to do with each other. Oh, good, wear miniskirts, bikini, walk naked. It's all... Oh, yeah, that's what they're saying. They're saying, they're saying that they want your kids to walk naked. Good, but if you wear the hijab, no, no, no. Here is a video that will boil your blood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy these people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Oh, listen to that, destroy these people. I don't know if anybody uh, remembers a video where um, Apostate Prophet is doing his uh, shaky booty character. And he, I think he calls up a live stream which uh, Abdullah Samir is on. <laughs> and he's doing this exact thing like a parody, like saying, you know, may you come to Islam or may Allah destroy you. <laughs> and again, it, but it's not a parody with people like Ali Dawa. This is exactly how they are, calling upon their God to destroy people because there's something he doesn't like. I'm trying to destroy these people who oppress people just because they want to obey their Lord. Look at yeah, the oppression. You have to, in limited circumstances, take off your headscarf. I mean, it doesn't really strike me as that much of an oppression, to be honest. I mean, yes, you can still argue is there a case for saying this is going too far? The state shouldn't be telling you what to wear. OK, I can I can have that argument. But if you're going to talk about it being oppression, especially someone like you who would want to force Sharia onto everyone in this world. Again, are you really the person to be talking about causing oppression? at this video and tell me it doesn't boil your blood. I mean, I don't know where he's got this video from anyway, and there's there's nothing in it that's specific enough to say this is definitely in France or even a school, to be honest, but yeah, we'll let it play. This is the sign, my sisters. Subhanallah. Those are sisters from France where we, they are asked to remove the hijab before going into a school. Subhanallah. But what you are saying is actually worse than what you think. They are, those videos are from the news asking the school to forbid even the abaya that they're wearing. Like, why are they removing the scarf and not the abaya? This is what they're talking about. This is the sign for you, my sisters. 
to be grateful to Allah, to be observant with your hijab because those girls will give anything to have your right to wear the hijab properly. Pro and there's plenty of women in the Muslim world who would love the right not to be forced to wear it. And we've seen that over and over again in places like Iran, where you've had a lot of brave um, women who have been taken off um, the headscarf at considerable risk to their own personal safety. Properly, the neck, the arms, with the sun coming, sisters, be strong with your hijab and be grateful. Did you guys see that? Wallahi, our sisters. And I'm trying to be balanced here. I'm not trying to... Oh, yeah, of course you're trying to be balanced. I mean, when anybody thinks of Ali Darwa, they think calm, reasonable, balanced, fair. Yeah, of course. I'll go at them. But... <sighs> Wallahi, my dear, I'm so sorry. This might sound selfish. This might sound just in the moment, I'm just being rash. Yeah, but you do your best work when you're being rash, which is most of the time. Well, it's better you don't go to school. Well, <laughs> I mean, dear, oh dear, it's better you don't go to school. This is Ali Dawa's advice. It's better to be an ignorant person with everything that's going to cost you in life rather than um, accept you can't wear a bit of cloth on your head for a few hours a day in your school. This is your advice. Allah, it is better that you do not go to school and take the hijab off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for you. If your parents are sending you to school because they see that as more important and they see that as more important than you wearing the hijab, then they sound like very good, rational, sensible parents who understand that getting an education is going to be something key to your chances for success in life. And let's be fair. Muslim communities in general in the West are some of the poorest performing in terms of educational standards, which will then have a knock on in terms of jobs and stuff like that. It is a fairly common occurrence in different Western countries. And so for you to spread the idea that it's best to not even get an education, just don't go to school, just shows that people like you want to compound those problems for the Muslim community. You're a danger to the future of the Muslim community with this kind of rhetoric. Be respectful to your parents. I'm not asking you guys to be rude to your parents, but I don't know where the head's at. The head's at a hierarchy of importance. Now, the other funny thing is most um, Muslims who live in France don't actually wear this kind of religious clothing anyway. So you're acting as if this is anything more than just a, a small number of the how many millions of Muslims who live in France. So you're trying to whip this up to be much bigger than it actually is. I don't know where the head's at. It's taking the aql over the knuckle. Literally, you know what this means? And I talk about this over and over again, and people think I talk for talk about it for the sake of it. Do you know what take Yeah, you talk about it for the rage clicks. That's what you do. Taking the aql over the knuckle means, yeah? Let me tell you what it means. It means that you do not have enough trust what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you and that he will take care of you and he will provide for you that you would rather send your daughters to school and... Yeah, well, let's have a look at how Allah has provided for them. I mean, if you look at most of the Muslims who live in France, where are they from? They're from North Africa, okay? Now, none of these places like Algeria, like uh, Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, None of these have had any particular recent wars or anything like that. And yet they constantly flocking to France, this so-called terrible, oppressive, Islamophobic country. So why is that if it's so terrible there? Is it because they actually know that that's where they will be provided with a good education, with a good standard of living? If Allah is so good at providing this stuff, why are we having millions of Muslims constantly moving to the West? Because Allah don't sound like he's providing too well for them. And it's even true if you look at the, the very wealthy Gulf states. I mean, are they producing a generation of Muslims who have great scientific education and great mathematical education and great engineering education and making all these strides in the modern world, building the future for the world? No, they're really not. Because unfortunately, this is what happens when you have a significantly conservative tradition of Islam is that education in anything outside of Islam is at best considered second tier. So even in the wealthy Muslim countries, they are making a disproportionately small contribution to those people who are going to improve the world. 
they're still all coming from the non-Muslim world. So again, where is Allah providing? Tell them, Hijab, okay, take it. what can we do? You need to study, you need to stand. Isn't the vast Allah's earth vast enough? Look what Allah says in the Quran. When the angel sees their souls of those who, were wronged, who have wronged themselves, sc scolding them, what do you think you were doing? They will reply, we were oppressed in the land. The angels will respond, was Allah's earth not spacious enough for you to em emigrate? It is they who will have the hell as their home. What an evil destination. Now, I'm not applying this ayah to those because Allah says in the Quran, except helpless men, women and children who cannot afford a way out. Yeah. You're saying if they don't leave the country, if they don't emigrate so that they can take care of their religion, then the Quran is saying that they deserve hellfire. And then, yes, it gives this caveat of those who um, are too helpless or weak to be able to leave. But does that really talk about most Muslims living in a place like France? I mean, even if you're at the poorer end of things, you could probably still they could probably still return to the um, countries of the, uh, either their origin or their family's origin if they really wanted to. I'm sure many of them would still have dual citizenship or could easily get citizenship. So it's not like there's no possibility that they couldn't leave. So according to you and according to your advice, you're saying that unless they leave the country, they're going to get hellfire, which I just find incredibly ironic, because if this was any non-Muslim saying it, they would be accused of being far right. So this is a this is another wonderful revelation from Ali Darwin now. It is right to hope that Allah will pardon them for Allah is most forgiving, very merciful. Okay, whoever emigrates in the cause of Allah will find many safe heavens and bountiful resources throughout the earth. Those who leave their homes and die while emigrating to Allah and his messenger, their reward has already been uh, secured with Allah and Allah is forgiving, most merciful. Brothers and sisters, I'm not applying this hadith to them. I mean, this Quran to them, ayah. This is the... Well, why not? Why aren't you doing it? Because, I mean, that's how the Quran reads. I've, I've had a look at it and it is how you've read. Yes, it makes an exception for those who have no way out of that country. But that applies to basically no one who's living in a place like France. Promise of your Lord. If your deen, and I found out that, subhanAllah, these people are now petitioning. Petitioning? Saying what? Taking the hijab is not enough. Why are they wearing a bayah? Well, I don't know who this petition is, and I, and to be honest, I couldn't be bothered to look it up because it's probably going to be some kind of um, misrepresentation from Ali Dawa. It usually is on these things. But, yeah, I mean, it may be that m there are some people in France who, yes, also see that as an overt symbol of Islam. And let's be fair to them as well. I'm not saying I actually agree with this position for the French, but I can sort of understand it. More than any European country... They have suffered at the hands of political Islam, of Salafists like you, of the people who you are adjacent to in their beliefs in terms of those who go out and have committed how many acts of terrorism in France? I mean, it just seems to be nonstop. The beheaded teachers, the uh, trucks mowing people down, the bombings, the stabbings. I mean, the attacks on Jews, the attacks on teachers, the attacks on gay people. It, I mean, it has been just constant these past 10, 15 years, particularly in France more than anywhere else. So you can understand to an extent, whether you agree with the overall argument, you can understand where this comes from when they're looking to try and curb the spread of this kind of political Salafist Islam, which creates the breeding ground for the kinds of atrocities that have happened in France. My dear sisters in France, or brothers and sisters in France, put your deen first. Yes, you might come and say, yeah, brother, it's easy for you. Look, I'm living in the West myself. Yeah, exactly. So you're a fucking hypocrite, just like you are all the time. You talk all this big talk, and yet, why are you still living here? I mean, it's not like your family, according to you. Your family didn't flee from some war. They came from Turkey. And why? According to your own words, because they were being persecuted for being a minority Muslim sect by other Muslims, by traditionalist Sunni Muslims, which you have taken on board. So you've essentially taken on the religion of the people that used to persecute your family. So, yeah, you telling other people to leave the West when it has made you very comfortable, very rich, 
um, with all your advertising now. Again, I didn't even play it at the start of this video, but he just got endless, like, just just grift adverts for, like, supplements now. I mean, how is he any different to someone like Alex Jones or anybody else who just, just pumps out these bullshit products for people to sell which have no value? I mean, he's embraced, the if you, like, you want to say, he's embraced, the, like, the Western capitalist way more than most Westerners have. So for him to be decrying this and say, oh, yeah, 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 everyone else should leave, except me, because I'm nice and comfortable. Yeah, it makes you look like a fucking hypocrite. Yeah? The point is what? Are you going to send your children? What's going to be next? Wear miniskirts? You're going to let your daughters? Yeah, of course. That, I mean, that doesn't that happen all the time that um, girls are forced to wear miniskirts to go to school. Yeah, that's a really rational response, Ali. Wear miniskirt? Your brothers uh, shave their beards off, whatever it may be? What is going on? Do you not have tawakkul in Allah? Do you not have trust in his words? He, Allah, saying he will provide for you. It and again, show that in a practical sense. Why do you think most of those Muslims are there? Because they know in their own countries it's very difficult to get that provision. Many places, this earth is vast. If you are going to put the dunya before the hereafter, you're going to lose the dunya and the hereafter. They're going to humiliate you. And this is an evidence that shows these people do not give a damn about freedom of speech. They well, it's not a freedom of speech issue. I mean, you could say it's freedom of um, expression in terms of what you're wearing. They don't care. The ummah of kufr is one. Then so he listens to that now. And, and see, he says something that's stupid as well. He's basically trying to say all non-Muslims are basically uh, doing this the same way. Like he's trying to do this thing of like the house of the Muslims is one big house and the house of non-Muslims is one big house and they're just going to oppress you no matter what. Now, France is quite unusual in this and he knows it from the fact that he lives in England. There are no such restrictions and that's true in most other places. You won't get that restriction in America or Canada or Australia or Germany or Italy or Spain or Portugal or, you know, a myriad, of, you know, Scandinavian countries, a myriad or most of the Western world, in fact, there aren't these kinds of restrictions. Yet he's trying to fire people up to say, because they do it in France, that means they do it everywhere amongst the non-Muslims. And to even call it oppression in the first place is a stretch. One, all they want is you do not practice your religion. That's no, that's not. A... If that was true, then Islam would simply be banned. Has it been banned in any country in the world? No. So that's a lie, Ali. All they care about. Do not practice your religion, an outright enemy. And if we're going to do that, I would rather not send my children to school. Yeah, so all your children can grow up to be as ignorant as you are. That will be great. And probably that's what you want, because then what else can they turn to? Salafi extremism, just like you. Wallahi, you know why? Because I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide. Do not ever. Really, does Allah provide for you or does all your grifting and adverts on YouTube provide for you? I'd say it's the latter category, my friend, and Allah didn't invent YouTube. Never compromise your religion at the cost of displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, Allah will... Well, I mean, technically, you do it all the time, don't you? Because you believe in all this apostasy, murder, you know, murdering apostates, yet you don't go around doing it in England, do you? Yeah, because you'd be put in jail, so you'll have to compromise all the time fortunately for the rest of the civilized world so again this is a bit hypocritical immediate they are now trying to go for their abayas let them show their body yes sexual objects no it's not let them show their body it's not like you can't wear anything else to cover up yourself sexual objects that's what they are that's what they want you can see the book beauty sick sexual object beauty sick yes these girls are beauty sick sleeping around going and sleeping around with men for validation because they feel like they're not good enough See, where the fuck is this coming from? So if you take off that scarf, that means you've got to go sleep around with everyone. I mean, there is no connection from this. This is just your sick mind, Ali. This is because you've got no respect for women, because all you see them is an object to stick your private parts in, that you project that upon everybody else in the world. So, yeah, this, this is your mind. It's not the sickness of anyone else. This is what the Western world is doing to the woman. They're treating them like toilets. You're a walking toilet. Oh, here we go again, the toilet talk. Listen to him. He's so charming. Talking about women being toilets again. Walking toilets in this case. 
I mean, he does this now. So I'll, I'll have to do a compilation video at some point, a, a, a short of all the times he does this, because I've seen it on minimum three videos, and it might be more now. Toilet. When a man wants to ejaculate, you come. Let me ejaculate inside you. Now you can go. This is the level they want to drop the. Charming again. I mean, listen to this ugly language he uses, talking about women as toilets, basically there to be ejaculated into. If you don't, and, and bearing in mind as well, right? He's talking about any woman who is not in traditional Islamic dress with the hijab and with the scarf. He is basically saying that you are therefore a walking toilet to be ejaculated into. Now, he is talking about most Muslim women in Western countries who don't actually wear this kind of Islamic dress. The majority don't wear it. So you've now called the majority of Muslim women in all those countries walking toilets that are there to be ejaculated into. This is the kind of classiness that comes out of Ali Dawa's mouth. Woman down to, this is what you want, a walking toilet, and Islam is there to... He just keeps saying it. This sick way that they look at women as just pieces of meat. Um, and, and, and then the projection to say that it's the Western world who thinks like this. No, it's you. It's you people who think like this. It's you Dawa creeps that look at women in this disgusting way. Honor, and that's why more people come to Islam which are women than men. Yeah, you all love to say this. There's no actual evidence for any of that. And even if it were the case that the tiny number of people that convert are majority women, how long do they actually last for? More than a couple of years? I mean, start with this rhetoric with all the converts. You know, let, let, let's play this video to any woman that's thinking of converting to Islam. Let's see how many would really want to convert when they see this is how you talk about women. You will be questioned. Do not compromise your religion. Yes? If you are after the worldly gains and my daughter needs to study and get this and that and she has to be a lawyer and this that, to hell with her degree. Yeah, to hell with her having a real life, having a successful life. Make them ignorant so they can be taken advantage of ruthless men like you. To hell with his degree, your son, whoever it is. To hell. None of this is going to matter on your maqiyama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you, and wallahi, but I swear upon the Lord of the Kaaba, I swear upon the Lord of the Kaaba, Allah will give you a way out. Put your trust in... Yeah, the, the way out, he would he did give him a way out if he want to choose to look it that way. He allowed them to come to France, <laughs> you know, he allowed them to come to England, to Germany, to Italy, etc. That was their way out. That means that now they have got more chance of success in life and you want to take that away. Trust in him, not your limited mind. And if they are oppressing you to this level, migrate, migrate. I know some sister, sister. So this is Ali Dawa's message now. They're saying like, if, if you're not comfortable with, with the law that says that you can't wear your hijab in certain institutions, then you should migrate. Oh, who comes to our podcast. Yeah, she left France for that reason. She left. May Allah deal with this, these individuals, these scums. And this Macron will spit in his face. I'll spit in his face. <laughs> so now he's sort of making casual threats towards the president of France. I mean, yeah, I, it, it's real brave of you to do that sitting in London, my friend. But um, <laughs> I mean, this is his level of classiness. He wants to spit in the face of the French president. <laughs> oh, man, you've got to love Ali Darby. He's fucking nuts. These evil people who do not even allow a Muslim woman, a Muslim woman to observe her hijab. Well, no, actually, in most of her life, she can still wear the hijab, as far as I know, with the French law. As I say, it's just particular municipal buildings, like schools and um, uh, government buildings and stuff like that. And I mean, it's probably airports as well, things like that. You know, if there's a, an issue of security involved, but it's not all over. I mean, they're not banned from wearing them in the streets, as far as I know. They're not banned from wearing them at home. They're not banned from wearing them just going into regular shops or anything like that. So... Again, I think you are lying. They are trying to strip you, not of your hijab. They are trying to strip you, not of your abaya. They are trying to strip you of your Islam. No, of your Islam. And that's the point, isn't it? Your extremist version where they've got to be covered up 24-7 if they're a woman. And there are many Muslims who don't believe that, who are, or they're happy to have the choice. And if a Muslim woman doesn't want to dress like that, then that's fine. So it's not their Islam. It is literally your Islam. And this is why you're shitting the bed over it. 
Wake up, O oh Muslims in France. There's 10 million of you. Wake up. Wake up. Do not send your daughters taking their hijabs off to go to school. To hell with their school. Allah will provide for them. Oksum billah, Allah will provide for them. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise. The biggest insult to Allah is that you make it seem as if Allah has created the heavens and the earth. There are billions of galaxies in our universe and he cannot provide for your daughter that you have to send them to school. And my I'm not sure what the billions of galaxies in the universe is. Are, are you sort of suggesting they emigrate to Alpha Centauri or something? I mean, what the fuck are you going on about? My dear sisters who are doing this, I know you guys hate it. I know you guys don't want to. I assume the best. I know, but it's heartbreaking for us to see that they are making you guys do that. May Allah destroy them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy them. <laughs> Again, this destroy rhetoric is brilliant. I might have to do a little clip of him doing all this, you know, saying that Allah's gonna destroy everybody because this is funny as hell. That's all I'm going to say. And that ayah that I read to the parents who are watching this, don't send your children to school. Do not send them to school if they're going to make I mean, that should be a headline in itself. Ali Dawa says, Quran said you shouldn't send your kids to school. <laughs> it's just brilliant. I love it. Every time this guy opens his mouth, he just gets worse and worse. Make them do that? Wallahi, don't. Wallahi, don't. Allah will give you a way out. Like Allah says in Surah Talaq, if you... Well, I suppose you said there's a way out. You're telling them to leave the country. But, you know, if they actually care about their children's future, they'll probably say, yeah, we can, you know, live with that. If, if that means that we'll have a bright future for our, our children because we actually love them. But, yeah, it's probably something beyond your comprehension. You fear me. I will give you a way out from places you can never imagine. And where are all those? Yeah, but again, you keep going on about this. But it, isn't it funny how most Muslims seem to want a way out of Muslim majority countries? Isn't that ironic? Feminists, where are the liberals defending these women's rights to wear the hijab? You. Oh, so now you're going to make an appeal to liberals and feminists. So, yeah, apparently, um, you know, your, your Islamist oppression of women, you wanting to force women to wear a hijab is a cause that liberals and feminists should take up. Now, sadly, there have been too many in both those categories who have fallen for this victim narrative that Salafis like you have been pushing for the last 20 years. But I think they're starting to wake up now. I think, um, you know, they realise that you Islamists will appeal to conservatives when it suits you, when you think you can get them on board. You'll appeal to liberals when you think you can get them on board. But, you know, truth is, you're not on any of their side, okay? And this is important. I mean, I don't normally get into traditional politics and stuff on this channel because I don't really think it's necessary. But understand, wherever you are on the political spectrum, these Salafists are on nobody's side. They are manipulators and they will try to appeal to other people's conscience or their, you know, their, their political leanings when it suits them. But they're on nobody's side. They're agents of chaos just looking to destroy everything. And when I say that, they're, they're not on regular Muslim side either, because look at what he's calling for. He's calling for something that would demonstrably make the standard of life worse for Muslims living in France if they um, if they followed his, his advice. So they're not on anyone's side but their own. You hypocrites! You double standard hypocrite two-faced cowards! No, they're, they're not. I mean, this is the point. I mean, why would... Any liberal or any feminist who is actually true to the values they believe in, why would they support an Islamist like you? Why would they support oppression of women, except through the kind of victim narrative ignorance that you've encouraged? So the fact that you know no one is speaking up, that's good. That means they're being true to their values as far as I can see. Right, so I don't know whether he's checking his blood pressure right there at the end, but that's how the video ends. So I know we've had a lot of doses of Ali Dawa on my channel lately, but can you blame me when he just keeps dropping these little beauties in his videos? So, um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. And I don't know, maybe the next video will be another Ali Dawa one because of the rate he's going. You know, I, I can't resist. I feel like I'm addicted to this clown show that he's putting out. Anyways, see you in the next one.